Sorry for you guys that aren't getting out. Big times. Yeah. Been getting lots of messages about people's, you know, hunting that's been cancelled overseas, but also here in Australia just can't get out of the cities because the situation. So we feel for you big time. Um, I don't know what I'd do if I couldn't enjoy this time of year. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Condolences to everyone. And uh, hopefully we can share a bit of what we're doing with you. Hopefully share the rut vicariously through us. Yeah. That'd be good. That's right. Yeah. All right. Something that's worked well for me is to get out a couple of weeks before the rut begins with the dog and just check the area I'm going to hunt. Generally, there's some calling cards, signs the bucks are leaving in the area, such as scrapes and rubs on trees. Scrapes are really easy to see when the rut's in bloom. You see great big holes in the ground and you can see where the deer are coming in each morning and rubbing and leaving their scent. But before the rut begins, these scrapes are still there they're just not turned over and they're not being used as much. But when you've got a dog that knows how to find them, it's really invaluable. Later on, you've got a map in your mind of the area and where the scrapes are. And you can go to these and rattle in a buck or even locate a bigger animal when the rut's in full bloom. Deer out on a little island in the swamp and they're on the opposite side and Matt's got the trade bow and we've just hatched a plan for him to get onto them and we're happy to sit back and watch. Kimber thinks it's pretty good. He's got zero cover. They didn't even wing me. Really? They didn't even know I was there. 20 metres, I had two of them. <sighs> Did you see the one on the far end? To your right. To your right? No. There was one but just to your I, right, yeah. I was super careful, I was out of sight of all of them. Yeah. And uh, a flock of birds spooked. 
oh, and just geez. sent them off. You're joking. Yeah, even as I got up to at the bank, like I could see their backs and I was watching them. Yeah. Crept right up to the point where I had two of them sitting there and just took one step and then the birds went off to my side oh, and then no. everything cleared out. That water was disgusting. Oh, well <laughs> done like, to you, man. Yeah, that like job. that's just yeah, it was great like, effort. Ankle, ankle deep mud down the bottom of there. There were turtles coming up and feeding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. Well done, Matt. Good job here though, even if you get the other side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Water, yeah. Oh well, gotta be committed. Yeah. yeah. Stick yeah, bacon. Well, you see the footage. When, as soon as you got out of the water, there was one out to the right in the open, quartering away. Yeah, right. Standing there in that little hollow. Well, I, I, I couldn't see. Yeah. yeah right. we, we, we got, I was I was scanning everything yeah, every yeah, step. Saying, Turn around and we're like, yeah, we're trying to get your attention. <laughs> right. Yeah. We should have sorted on that before we left. Uh, it's good stuff, fellas. Good times, eh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice to get a stalk on. <laughs> nice to get a fire, too, now. Getting opportunities to stalk in on animals is high during the fallow rut. The deer activity is a little more progressive than usual, and gaining meat for the freezer is always well sought after. However, not every stalk is successful. No doubt, one of the worst feelings is having the wind hit the back of your neck mid-stalk. You just work so hard to get in close, to get to a distance where you feel comfortable to take a shot with the bow, only to have it blown away by the swirling wind. Executing the perfect shot at the right moment is not as easy as some might think. After thousands of arrows on the range, you think that the shot might be just as easy, but it's definitely not. You push pretty hard to get to a position, then work methodically through your stalk, only to see the arrow fall short or high. What a frustrating moment this was for Luke. And as a mate standing next to him, I felt for him. Luke did manage to line all his ducks up and got a nice spiker, which we were both happy to get, considering that it was still early rut and the animal was going to eat so good. Great shot, Luke. Top shot. Yeah, top shot, mate. Yeah, little spike that we just got. Called him in. We were just packing up. Maddie had put the uh, camera away and then let out one last call. And he came straight to us from 40 metres out, I suppose, when we saw him. Yeah. Maybe a bit, little bit further. Called again once as he had his head down, and then he just beelined it straight towards us. Um, shot him at about five metres max, I reckon it was. Yeah. Went in the point of the shoulder here, was slightly quartering on. Um, yeah, exit wounds just behind the shoulder there. Yeah. Passed through as he was fairly trotting. <laughs> One of the most exciting and well-known aspects 
of hunting during the fallow rut is to rattle bucks in or call them in. Generally what we do is get two cast antlers or some antlers off an animal that's been taken previously, clash them together, rub them together, make some noise and simulate two bucks fighting. This is irresistible to a rutting fallow buck. If you throw in the odd croak and doe call, it brings him in nice and close, allowing the bow hunter to take a clean shot. Yeah, he had a cut on his shoulder. That was yeah. more broad. I don't know how. Had it on his chest down here, but you know, a couple of metres there shouldn't have made that much difference. Yeah. We were really just, I don't know. I'll have to watch it back and see what happens. <laughs> he, um, I, I was a bit, because I was on the camera, yeah. just working the camera, and so next thing you know, he pulled up there, just there. Yeah, he was looking straight at like, me, and I was going to try and slowly get another arrow, but he was looking yeah. right at me. And so I reached down, I just left the camera, reached down on my bow. This is on my leg. Yep. I picked it up and then he went, he yeah. jumped. So I go for and pulled him up. Yeah, pulled him up pretty much right, exactly in a good spot yeah. too, because there was all these friends. <laughs> I, I think I've whacked him pretty good, I think. That sounded like it. Yeah, yeah. It sounded like it. I was just going to go and have a look, see if my. Yeah, I'll come and help you find your arrow. Yeah, no yeah. worries. So the deer's come in, there we see Luke coming through there now. And basically he's come across here and just on the other side of that tree there, just in there between the tree, that tree and that blacker tree, punched him there at 35. So we'll go have a look. You can take him. There's his arrow. There's arrow, yeah. Yep, yeah, lots of blood, broken arrow. Constant, constant, constant trail. Constant trail through here. Have a look. This side. Yeah, he's just, he's just leaking out of him. Look at that on the log. Yeah, yeah. Should have gone right, I think. Huh? Massive blood trail. You don't get much more than that, Luke. No, that's pretty good, especially with a fellow. Good interesting with that thing. Man, he's still moved. Look at it all over this. He's obviously kept going. This deer's gone further than we thought. He's leaking pretty bad though. He's going up with it. Yep. Following it through here. Still going. Still going. Doing very well to get this far. This way. Right. Yep, here he is. Hard up here. Oh, he's in a mangle of a spot. Uh, yep, but yeah, I've hit him right on the point of the shoulder up high, which is a bit odd. Mm. And the arrows actually sliced him open about five inches here. And then there's a little cut mark through his fur, back to his last rib. Yeah, back there. And the arrows just gone. Straight yeah, there. arrows skyrocketed and couldn't find it. Mm. Um, he then ran over Matt's direction, but going away a little bit. Yeah. Um, he still had no idea what it was. He was confused. I was going to get another arrow out, put another one into him. Um, but he was looking directly at me. 
Yeah. So I didn't have much of a choice and then he started running. I gave a doe call and then... He swung around. Yeah, he swung around to give Matt a bit of a shot and you can tell. Yeah, well, he just swung around at quartering on and, uh, it's, you know, it was about 35 and I poked it through the front of the chest and it's just come out the, come out the shoulder down here, taken the heart out, I think. But I'll tell you what, we, it was an almighty crack. Blood everywhere, plenty of blood. I think it's probably nicked the heart on, on the way through and broadhead's a bit of a hiding as well. Like. Fellow bucks aren't the only ones interested in the rattle and calls. Generally, we'll call in quite a few fellow does as well, and this gives us good opportunity to put some meat in the freezer. There's not a lot that's better eating than a prime fellow. The steaks that come off these things are amazing, and anything that's classed as trim gets put to good use. Left throat, left front, yeah. Pretty much three quarters of the length of the deer. Uh, I was using a stealth this time, just a 400 grain arrow out of a 70 pound bow and it blew straight through. Capturing a shot buck while calling in was pretty difficult this year for 2020. They came in from all angles, sometimes even downwind. And when you've got a buck coming in on your six and a camera to run and an arrow to put in the right place, it doesn't always pan out. <coughs> So many deer coming in from behind, this is crazy. Just a spiker man, but yeah. like I shouldn't say just a spiker, we want to get another one for the table. But... You know what I did, I what? got a pressure cord, I did your job. Did you? Well done. <laughs> I, I got him on GoPro coming yeah, right. through, but like he, he just came through so quick and then I pulled him up with a bit of a yeah, I that. Yeah. call. Did you see him when he yeah, yeah, dropped yeah. his marks? It's just a good idea when you're tracking deer just to reference the size of the marks um, because there's a lot of deer tracks through here and if that's all we can go off it's going to be difficult to be able to stay on him but that you know those little variables will help also the distance between front leg and back leg if you get that opportunity it also gives you some indication as well uh, but anyway I'm going to look here. Let's have a look what sort is it? Dark red, which is good blood. Let's take some more blood up here. Yeah, it looks hearty. Yep, pass through. Double lung. Double lung dear. Nice shot boy. It's because he's only dropped. Yes. He's going to oh that's true. Yeah. To push off he's gone down low, gone in there and come out the way. Yeah, yeah. Luke and I are pretty stoked working as a team on this rut. Uh, I was following Luke with the camera this morning, just couldn't get it done. Wind was pretty uh, hectic. Yeah, it's not doing what it's supposed to. Make that's life. Yeah, it's just the way it is, but meat in the freezer, uh, 35 metre shot, pretty stoked, straight behind the front shoulder. Luke's got the big lens on the camera, so it might not pick me up that great, but basically just got this spiker boned out. You can see the way I laid the leg down to protect the meat from the dirt. The moral of the story here in this little clip is just to keep your meat free of contamination. Don't whack it in the dirt. Don't fill it full of dirt and grass seeds and debris, especially if you're going to hang it for four to six weeks. Take a little bit of care and use good technique. How are you doing, babe? Just getting this all together. Yeah, I thought the apples would be great. Yeah, I think with the, pork. the apples would be perfect. Mm. How good is food? I just made it. Are you a food lover? Well, everything revolves around it. Or well, maybe not everything. But when it comes to hunting, it's the full circle package. What do you think of this little contraption? This is a radiant heat oven that a friend of mine designed. It can actually be backpacked in and used out in the backcountry. 
some venison snags here that Maddie White had made. Pretty much perfect as far as a meal is concerned. All cooked on the fire. It wouldn't be fair yeah. if our other hunting partner, oh, good Kimber, girl. missed out. We got him. We got him, didn't we? Good girl. Good catch. Good catch. That is a good catch. Well done. Catch a rabbit. I can't imagine life without a dog. I've always had one. Couldn't do without one. Over the years, my main motivator in hunting has always been food. However, I have taken my share of stags and bucks. This year, I wanted to mount one. I wanted to get a representative head that allowed me to see and feel and remember what my hunt was about and what the years have represented. Finding a mature buck proved a little difficult this year even keeping on top of them as far as their location was challenging. Being so early in the rut, a rattle would send them way back to their scrapes into their home territory in fear that another buck was moving in. They hadn't quite grabbed hold of their does. The does just weren't cycling and this was making life very difficult in getting in close on an animal or even calling one in. It may look Easy-ish on camera, but when you got spikers circling the perimeter and does, you know, multiple does, six to seven does, and then and more at times. So hard getting up on them, and in this thick stuff, it's not like you can see them. You've got to get to 50 before you can see them, and that's on a good day. Well, before you can pinpoint where they are. Yeah, that's right. The bucks had started croaking in the morning and in the evening, but COVID-19 had ramped up and restrictions were coming in. Luke felt it was necessary to head back to the family, and I continued on my own on the private property with Danny or one of the boys visiting every now and then. Over the days ahead, I managed to locate a really decent buck. He had a distinct croak, an individual sound that I could identify above the others that were moving about. I managed to get in close a few times. I even came to full draw at one stage at about 40 metres, but decided not to take the shot as there was brush and other debris in the way. I backed out more than three times, I think, in total, before getting an opportunity on my own with the GoPro to stalk in close on this amazing animal.
exciting. Some scars torn here. getting all soppy with you hunters out there that have been affected by COVID-19, stuck at home under restrictions. I do feel for you guys. I hope at a very minimum this video has provided some entertainment or at least reminded you of just how good it is to get out into the bush, to go out and provide for your family or chase that elusive amazing animal. Take care guys and I hope the future's bright for all of us. The boat's cracking. The boat's cracking. <laughs> the cracking boats. <laughs>